Hey everybody and welcome back to Everything Tech and today we're going to be clean installing Mac OS High Sierra. Before we get started I'd like to mention a couple of things and the first is the length of these videos. Yes this video is going to be long and that's mainly because I don't know if the person watching this video has a previous experience in clean installing Mac OS so I like to go through every step and explain it. But if you already know certain aspects of the process, look down below for skip times and you can go ahead and skip right to the parts that you need help with. The next issue is sound or background noise. I live in an area where streetcars are driving up and down the street, so you may hear them in the background. There's really not much I can do about it except just tell you about it so you're aware of it. Bear with me with all the sound levels going on outside. I'll try to speak loudly when I know a streetcar is going by, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, you want to make sure that your computer is compatible with High Sierra, and I will provide a link down below to the website that will give you a list of all of the computers that are supported by High Sierra. So here's a website and I will be displaying uh, the names and the models and the years and stuff like that. If you don't want to see the website, these are the models of Apple computers that are supported and from what year on. So if your computer falls within these parameters, you should be able to support Mac OS High Sierra. And you can always upgrade from these software versions here. So El Capitan, Yosemite, Mavericks, and Mountain Lion, as well as Sierra. Now, if you're going to be performing an upgrade, you're going to need at least 2 gigs of RAM and 14.3, I would say 15 gigabytes of free space in order to perform the upgrade. Now, if you don't want to erase all of your data, you can do the upgrade. That way you don't have to go through the process of creating a bootable drive. If you don't want to create an installer and stuff like that, you can always perform the upgrade directly from this application here, which is what opens as soon as you finish downloading High Sierra. So if you want to continue with the process and your computer falls within these parameters, we can go ahead and continue. Next, we're going to have to download Mac OS High Sierra. And this is what it looks like after it's downloaded. So in order to download it, we're just going to go into our app store here and you should see the featured tab and you should see Mac OS High Sierra right here in the banner. Now, if you don't see it anymore because they took it down or for whatever reason, just search for High Sierra in the search bar and you should see it come up right here. I'll also link it directly to in the description so you can just click on that link and it'll open the Mac App Store. And just go ahead and download it. But before you download it, you can always check to make sure that the features you see on here are features that you like. And if all that checks out, just go ahead and download it. Now please take note of the size of the file. So it's gonna may take a while to download. So it is 4.8 gigabytes in size, but the total size of the installer is actually 5.17 gigabytes. And you need to know that because we are going to need a flash drive that is at least eight gigabytes in size. And if you do not have a flash drive that is at least eight gigabytes in size, you can always look on Amazon for flash drives. Here we have SanDisk for $12.99, you get two of them. Or if you really want to take it a step further, you can always do USB 3, which is a little faster. But I know that the newest Mac computers don't have USBs. They have USB-C, they actually do have USB, but it's a different uh, form of USB. So you can always look for a USB-C. Although these have a little bit of higher capacity, you can always use these after the installation is complete, or you can buy an adapter and use a regular flash drive. So once you have your flash drive, we can go ahead and prepare it for the installer. So what we're gonna do is run disk utility. And make sure you have your flash drive plugged into your computer and make sure that it shows up here in disk utility. In order to get to disk utility though, the easiest way is just doing command space or going up to the little magnifying glass up at the top right hand corner and just type in disk utility. Once disk utility opens, just locate your drive. If it's a new drive, you don't have to worry about backing it up or anything, but if you are using a previous previously used flash drive, make sure you back it up to another hard drive on the cloud or to another computer. Don't back up anything to the same computer you're going to be doing the clean install on because everything's going to get erased. Once you have your flash drive backed up, we can go ahead and format it. So we're going to go ahead and erase. We're going to format it to Mac OS Extended Journaled and we're going to name it My Volume. Capital M and capital V, no space. And I'll show you why once we get the down the terminal command. So we're going to go ahead and erase. And the erase process is complete. So we just go ahead and click done. 
Just make sure that it is formatted correctly, Mac OS Extended Journal, and we can go ahead and click out of Disk Utility. Just close out of that. And here is the website that's going to give us the terminal command line for creating the bootable installer. Now it gives you several command lines for Sierra, El Capitan, Yosemite, or Mavericks, but we're gonna be doing High Sierra. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this. And make sure again that you named your drive my volume because it says here the following examples assume the installer is in your applications folder and the name of your USB flash drive is my volume. So once you have that copied, we're going to do again command space and run terminal. I'm going to go ahead and open a new window here so you can see better. And we're just going to go ahead and paste the command line here and it's going to ask us for the password. Now the password that you're going to be putting in is the same password used to unlock your computer. So when you turn on your computer for the first time and it asks you for a password, that's the password you're going to be putting in here. So we go ahead and put in our password and it says ready to start. To continue we need to erase the volume. If you wish to continue type Y then press return. So we just put Y press return and it starts erasing the disk. This process will take some time, so just sit back and relax and depending on how fast your USB drive is, you wanna make sure you just have plenty of time, give this plenty of time to do its thing. And if it takes longer than an hour, just go ahead and restart the process again and hopefully it'll work that time. So we're just gonna go ahead and leave this thing here. We'll be back once the installation is complete. So now the installer is finally completed and uh, we can finally use it to clean install Mac OS High Sierra. The process took roughly about 17 minutes and depending on the speed of the flash drive, it can take a little more or a little less. Again, like I showed you, if you decide to purchase a USB 3 or even a USB-C flash drive, it will take a little less. This is a USB 2.0 uh, flash drive so that's why it took 17 minutes but if it takes longer than that I think there is a problem and you should uh, start the process over again so let's go ahead and jump right into my handheld camera so we can go ahead and do the clean install process so here we are outside of the capture software and if you're gonna be performing this installation on a computer that isn't the computer you made the installer on make sure you plug in your flash drive as you see here I've already plugged it in and again pardon me for the shaky camera but uh, this is the best we can do for capturing the installation process. Now, if you are gonna be doing this on a laptop like I am, make sure you also have it connected to your power supply because you don't want the battery to run out on you for whatever reason. And if it's less than 50% battery, it's gonna tell you it can't install unless you plug in the power supply. So just plug in the power supply so you don't have to worry about it. And before we actually clean install, make sure you back up all of your files, all of your data, because you will lose it if you don't back it up accordingly. And I'm not responsible if you lose your pictures or your documents. It's up to you to back up accordingly. And you can back up to Time Machine Backup if you like, or back up to the cloud, or back up to a hard drive. Whatever it is you use for backing up, as long as it's backed up, you're okay. And once you plug in your flash drive, look on your desktop. If you see the install Mac OS High Sierra drive there, you're okay and we can go ahead and continue with the process of clean installing. So we're gonna go ahead and restart the computer and pardon me for the shaky camera, I'm trying to stretch the tripod legs out here. But we are going to restart the computer and when we restart the computer, you're gonna hear a chime. As soon as you hear the chime, you're gonna press and hold the option button and make sure you have your volume turned up, that way you hear the chime. So we're just gonna go ahead and go to the Apple and uh, restart and it's going to ask you if you want to restart your computer now so we're going to go ahead and do the restart you heard the chime and now i'm holding down the the option button and in doing so you can see all of the bootable drives that are connected to the computer including let me just get in there closer for you macintosh hd and install mac os high sierra now right now I'm going to be removing my backup drive because I don't want to uh, mess around with that when we get into the process of erasing the disk. So what we're going to do now is select install Mac OS High Sierra, click on the arrow and just wait for the, the installer to load 
After it's done loading the installer, here we have macOS Utilities, and if we zoom in here, you should be able to see the four different options that are available. The first one is to restore from Time Machine Backup. This is in case you made a Time Machine Backup of your previous machine. You can go ahead and restore from that machine, Time Machine Backup. Next, we have Install macOS. So if you don't want to lose any of your data, you can go ahead and select this and continue with the installation. If you have any questions, you can always get help online, and this will launch Safari and it will have some uh, questions that people typically ask and it's always a useful tool if you if this is the first time you do this. Next we have Disk Utility which will allow us to access all of our disks and erase all of our disks if we want to or any particular disk. So we're going to be using the Disk Utility. So we click on continue and here in Disk Utility it shows us all of our different drives including Macintosh HD and our external drive, which is what we're currently using to install uh, High Sierra. So we're going to be just dealing with Macintosh HD. If your computer didn't name it Macintosh HD and you see something else, as long as it's under the internal tab here, which I'm just going to get in closer there so you see it. I did get some questions as to why the computer wasn't really recognizing Macintosh HD, and that's mainly because it's named differently. But if it's internal and it has a drive here this is usually where you're going to install your operating system so we're going to go ahead and click on Macintosh HD and if you know the capacity of your drive it should say it there 250.79 gigs which is a 256 gig drive but the way that the computer reads it it roughly equates to 250 but that's okay once we do select Macintosh HD what we're going to do next is click on Erase, which is up at the top there. And I'll just show you up close. Erase. Once you do click on Erase, it's going to say Erase Macintosh HD. Erase Macintosh HD. And we're going to name it Macintosh HD. And this APFS Encrypted is the new file format that Apple is using. I forgot exactly what it means, but it's a new file format that Apple is using, supposedly in order to help with uh, minimizing the amount of storage that the operating system is using. And it, you can put a password there if you want. I'm just going to leave it as is, and I'm going to name it Macintosh HD. Now, keep in mind that I am doing the clean install directly from a machine running High Sierra, so you may not see this. If you do see it, that's great, but you may see something else. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at that. Macintosh HD, and then I'm gonna click on Erase. And then it'll begin to erase your drive, leaving it like new, so we can go ahead and continue with the installation as soon as this is done. And you can see there, Erase Process Complete. Click Continue, or click Done to continue. And you don't really wanna mess with the base system drives, so we're just gonna go ahead and exit out of a Disk Utility and click on install macOS. So we're gonna click continue and continue with the installation of macOS High Sierra. And here we have the main window that'll allow us to continue the installation. So we're just gonna go ahead and click continue. Agree to the terms and conditions. Agree again. And here we're gonna select the drive we want to install High Sierra. So if you do have multiple drives installed on your computer, make sure you install it on the one you named Macintosh HD or whatever it is you named it. Make sure it's the right one. Once you find it, click on install and just let it do the installation process. From here up until the point where you actually start customizing the machine, everything is automatic. So you can go ahead and leave it and let it do its thing. It's going to restart a couple of times. Just let it do its thing. It'll eventually start talking to you if you wait long enough. When you do the setup process, it's going to say macOS High Sierra has a voiceover. And that's when you know it's done. But you should be able to see something that allows you to select your keyboard. So once we see that, we're going to go ahead and continue. So Hi Sierra just finished installing and now it's allowing us to select our region here with the welcome screen. So depending on where you're from, you want to select your region. Of course, I'm from the US, so I select United States. We're going to go ahead and click continue. And now it's allowing us to select our keyboard. Now, if you select United States, but you're used to a different keyboard, you can always select uh, show all down here. It's a little checkbox and it's going to show you all of the keyboards that are supported by the operating system. So if you're used to, like, let's say, the Danish keyboard or a Chinese traditional keyboard, you can go ahead and select that. 
because I'm used to the US keyboard layout that's the one I'll be selecting and we're gonna go ahead and click continue next we're gonna select a Wi-Fi network so just from the list here which I blurred out but you should see your access point here and once you do find it just select it and put in your password and if your computer is connected directly through the internet by a wire like Ethernet cable you don't have to worry about setting up a Wi-Fi network but if you want to select Wi-Fi you can go ahead and do so but if you're on a laptop like me you really have no choice so we're gonna go ahead and click continue and now it's going to ask us if we want to transfer any information from a time machine backup or a startup disk from a Windows PC or don't transfer any information at all. Now I'm going to go with don't transfer any information right now but you can always select uh, from a Mac time machine backup or from a Windows PC if that's what you want to do. I'm not really that familiar with both of these options but I'm sure you will be able to find a video on YouTube as to what each of those options does. So I'm going to be doing don't transfer any information now so we're going to go ahead and click continue again and we're going to sign in to our app. Um, computer with Apple ID so we're just put in, put in your Apple ID once you put in your Apple ID and password we're gonna go click continue we're gonna agree to the terms and conditions click agree next we're gonna create an account so we're gonna go ahead and just uh, name it and you can always select your picture change your picture because this is the picture that I have on my iCloud account the, the iCloud account itself uses this picture that's the one it uses but you can always select one from the list here next we're gonna put in our password so whatever you want your password to be you can do so and you can also add a hint which is optional I'm not gonna do it because I know my password and in case I do forget it which is probably gonna be the case eventually you can check this box here leave it checked to allow your Apple ID to reset your password this will allow you to like it says reset your password with your Apple ID so we're gonna go ahead and click continue and now it's setting up your iCloud account and it's going to ask you if you want to set up iCloud keychain this is in case you have passwords stored on iCloud iCloud Keychain allows you to save those passwords and access them from any of your iCloud enabled devices. I like using that service so I'll set up iCloud Keychain and approve from another device will send a message to any of your iCloud enabled devices asking you to put in your password to iCloud. That way you can authorize or give this computer permission to use your, your iCloud Keychain. So we're going to go ahead and click continue and an approval has been sent to your devices so you can use iCloud Keychain and once that shows up on my phone I'll show you what that looks like and that's what this looks like right here approve Alex's MacBook Pro by entering the Apple ID now I can put in my Apple ID then hit approve I actually I put in my password there and hit approve and I should be able to start using iCloud keychain so we go ahead and just click OK and for Express setup before these three options here used to have their own separate windows and then you can still have it for those separate windows except I like the Express setup because it's easier I liked enabling uh, Siri and location services and said it's sending uh, information about the computer and the software to Apple but if you want to have control over these options you can click on customize settings and you can enable location services or disable them if you like. You click continue and you can either choose to share Mac analytics with Apple or crash data with app developers. I'll select that because I know it gets annoying when nobody gives you feedback for problems on your applications. So we're going to go ahead and click continue and we should be able to enable Siri and enable Ask Siri. This is the new version of Siri with a lot of really cool new features that allow you to control apps, keyboards, and stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue. And all your files in iCloud. Store files from documents and desktops in iCloud Drive. Now I do not have that much storage on iCloud. I have the base five gigabytes that Apple gives you as a standard. So I don't really enable this feature, but if you do have a storage or you pay for extra storage on iCloud, you, if you wanna enable this, you can. I, of course, since I only have five gigabytes, it wouldn't be so convenient for me to do so. So we're gonna go ahead and click continue. And File Vault Disk Encryption, it encrypts your disk and so nobody can access it and only a password or your iCloud can decrypt the disk. So you can see here, allow my iCloud to unlock my disk. I usually do this just for safety. So we're gonna click continue and you can disable it if you like, if, if that's not a problem for you. And now we're setting up your Mac. We should be able to see our desktop in just a few moments. 
And there we have it. We have completed the installation or the clean installation of macOS High Sierra. So we just have finished uh, completing the clean installation of High Sierra. And I did receive a couple of questions in my previous videos. How do I get my USB drive back so I can use it again? So I've decided to include that in this video. So the way you get your USB drive back is again by going into disk utility. So you can just go to your little magnifying glass there, continue doing the command space and search for disk utility. Once in disk utility, just look for your external drive, install macOS High Sierra, and we're gonna erase it. So if you're not gonna be using the USB anymore, you can go ahead and format it, but if you're gonna be using it sometime in the future or you know that this drive is gonna be just for that, you don't have to worry about this and you can go ahead and end the video here. But if you want to use this flash drive, for example, I have a 32 gigabyte flash drive that I use. I'm gonna go ahead and erase it. So we're just gonna go ahead and click on erase and we're just, I'm just gonna name it SanDisk and we're gonna format it to MS-DOS or the FAT32 standard, that way you can use it between Mac and PC. Once you have it formatted to MS-DOS and you named it, make sure the name is all capitals, so whatever you name it, so if it's no name or your name, whatever, just make sure it's all capitals. I always like naming it after the brand, that way I know what's connected. And just click erase and just wait for it to unmount, format, and remount the disk and you should be able to use your flash drive after it's done. And you can see there it's almost done. There you go. Now you can use your flash drive again without having to worry about what you do after you're done with the installer and after you're done with everything. So with that being said, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the description. I'll try to get to as many questions as I can. If I can't answer them, hopefully somebody out there that does know the answer can step forward and help you. And you can always contact me on Twitter or Facebook, links down in the description and links down in the description for all of the websites you saw. And with that being said, thank you all for watching. See you all in the next video.